right, so as you can tell, I've taken all the measurements for all of the locations where the rods go, which would be here, 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 and here. Again, I use the outside two to three inch micrometer. So now the only thing we need to do is torque down the rods that we're gonna be using. And then we also need to insert uh, the bearings as well. But yeah, I got new bearings somewhere. Yeah, there we go. There's the new bearings. So all I need to do is torque these two bolts to spec. I'm gonna use two blocks of wood so it don't move in the vise. And remember, we're doing all of this because we got a broken ring land on number five. Remember that. Using the, deal, the digital dial bore gauge is just that easy. Measure the bottom, input it in, start the sweeping. So in order to get the diameter of this using our dial bore gauge, we need to fix this rod into in, in, in such a way that it won't damage the rod. A lot of people use a, a block of two by four. I just had some random pieces sitting around. I've tightened it down on the vise. So now we just got to take these two bolts off, install the new bearings, torque it down. So therefore we can sweep that and get that diameter. For our rod bearings, we're using a set of sealed power uh, bearings for the rods. This is an OEM deal. It's an A series, and there's the part number in case you want it. And just like most engines, these uh, caps here, they got grooves in it. You got two grooves on this side, two grooves on that side. It don't matter which one you use, you just snap it into place. I like to take the bolts out, put it on something flat like this, and then make sure it's set into place like that right there. That way all the bearings, both tang ends are flush. We got this side, the tang is on this one. Same deal, snap it right into place. With them being cracked, they only go on one way. There you go. The tangs on the same side. First things, this is ironically an 11 millimeter. So that's what we're gonna use. And then these are supposed to be torque to angle. I like to do torque to torque, okay? First step, 15 foot pounds. Second step, about 50 ish foot pounds. Fifty foot pounds. Now, in order to get our old clearance, all we gotta do is sweep it with this digital dial bore indicator. I didn't want to bore you to death, but I've documented everything that I've measured as far as the crank and the rods with the OEM bearings. And these are my clearances here. I'll post up the uh, tolerance of the clearances probably down here somewhere, but all of these are within spec. Um, but if I could be honest with you, I don't like that 16. I don't like that 17. And then we got another 17 here. I may hit them journals with some 220, um, but at the same time, I, I don't think I'm gonna mess with, I don't know yet. Um, but we'll come back to that later. We'll just determine whether or not I leave it or if I do anything else different. But now it's time to talk about um, the pistons. So again, the reason I'm having to rebuild this motor for the second time, uh, we had a little mishap on cylinder number five. I don't know if it was due to detonation. I don't know if it was due to cylinder pressure, um, but either way, 
we end up missing a piece out of the uh, out of the uh, piston ring leg in between the second and the first ring. Looking at it, it don't look like the ring got distorted or anything. Um, I was running 25 thousandths. Um, that is, I guess, on the recommended small side. If you Google, um, what should I set my piston ring gap to on the LS motor for boost? Everybody's saying like 28, 30. Some people even saying even even wider than 30. On this round, I think I'm gonna do 28, 30 on the top, and then whatever I do on the top, I'm gonna do 2,000 bigger on the second ring. Uh, the rule of thumb is that you want it to do two to four thousand bigger on the second ring, so that um, if the pressure does bypass this first ring, meaning that it gets under here and gets trapped in between these two, you don't want the ring to flutter. You want that pressure that bypasses this top ring is got to bypass the second ring. That's the reason to go in like two to four thousand bigger. Um, so just keep that in mind. Luckily for me, um, I got two of these motors. So what we're going to end up doing is. We're actually gonna replace all these pistons. Um, I didn't measure it on camera, uh, but to make a long story short, uh, my original motor, the motor that's sitting over there by the 2J motor, that's the first motor I had. That motor, believe it or not, the pistons were a little bit bigger than the motor that we just tore up. Well, actually, it's, it's, it's vice versa. That's the old motor, that's the new motor. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to swap over um, these old pistons. These are the original, the old pistons, meaning they're a little bit bigger than the pistons in the motor that I just blew up. And um, the reason for that is I want to tighten up my piston wall to cylinder, or excuse me, my cylinder wall to piston clearance. This is my little little cheat sheet or my little checklist sheet that I made for myself. As you can see, I got eight circles. Those circles represent the pistons. And then also what I did is I took my uh, four to five inch micrometer, which is right here. And I measured each one of the pistons. I measured, as you can tell here, my old pistons. Those are all the numbers one through eight. And then I did the same thing for my new pistons. And if you can tell from a quick glance, my new pistons, when I say new, I'm talking about the old, the old, the, the pistons out of the old motor, out of the original motor. The pistons that, that, that's supposed to go into the motor that we're gonna use. As you can tell, all these last four digits are a little bit bigger than the last four on here. You see a bunch of 70s, 76s, 78s, and then over here you got some 84s, some 86s, and some even, even some 90s. So let me show you how I've come up with those measurements. So what I have right here is a set of Summit Pro LS pistons. Um, we'll talk about these in a, in a later episode. But one thing that I've noticed about some of these new pistons is you see that little dot right there where it doesn't have a coating? That dot is on both sides of the skirt and it represents the location that you're supposed to measure measure uh, the diameter of the piston using uh, the, the outside micrometer. So what I end up doing is I took my digital caliper, I don't care about the number, and th the cool thing about the digital caliper is, is you can extend that thing down to measure whatever you want. So all I did was I was extending that thing down to right there, which you can tell is basically right there in the middle. I locked down the top, and then all I did was take it over here to another one of my OEM pistons, set that up to there, and I took a Sharpie and I made my mark. That way, when I make that mark on both sides of this pistons, I know that I'm getting an accurate measurement. Um, this skirt actually gets a little bit bigger. Um, it's got a section, I think they call it, um, it's, it's like, it's kind of rounded like a, like a, uh, like a dad bod. Um, I put a picture up here, which is basically simulating the side of a piston, but it's kind of got like a barrel shape to it. So there's a section where it's small, big, being back to small, so being sure that you measure the diameter of this daggone piston, uh, uh, the, the location of this thing is crucial. crucial. I'm gonna show you real quick how we measure this thing using this four to five inch micrometer. And then, uh, I mean, I've already written on the outside here, but it's a good idea to, to write down everything that you're doing so that you have a, uh, 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 you don't have a chance of mixing stuff up. But let me show you how we measure it real quick. Take your four to five inch micrometer, open that joker up, you put one side in the middle of that blue line, and then this side, you just use the torque, and you got to make sure when you do this, you need to move it around so that you can see it like that, that the flat section of this daggone anvil is flat on the daggone uh, piston. And you just keep ratcheting it 
And remember, this ratchet deal puts the perfect amount of tension on it. Like I said, it's hard for me to explain this, but this side of the anvil has not made it all the way across, meaning that the, all these numbers are below this line and that zero hasn't lined up with that. So what this is gonna be, is gonna be 3.999, because remember, you can't see it on here, but every 25 mark is a 25. So, so, so technically it's like three, and then you got a 75, and then 75 plus 24 equals 99, and then you're gonna look at the 10th mark. And right here it looks like the five lines up with the 10th mark. So we're gonna have 3.9995. See, write it down. So now that we got the diameter of the piston, the last measurement we need to take is, is we need to take a measurement of how wide or the distance between these two are. So in order to do that, we're gonna use the dial bore gauge. Since I got a four inch bore, I'm using that. I've already tested it and went ahead and installed it. Now I need to take my ISO micrometer and measure that. And then I need to input it right here on my digital dial bore gauge. All right, so we're gonna make sure this plunger works. I'm pushing it in, releasing it. It's going right back to the number I put in, 4.015 and 7 tenths. So now we wanna take three measurements um, in this cylinder in the direction that the piston's gonna go. So the skirts is gonna go this direction. Um, the, the, the smallest diameter in this bore should be at the top. You mostly have most of the wear down here in the middle because that's where the piston kind of rocks at. And then you got a low section that kind of matters. But regardless, uh, we're going to take three measurements. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to take this top measurement. And we're only going to go down roughly, I don't know, but a little bit. Drop that in there. Rock it back and forth till I see the smallest number. It's right there. 4.0020. We're gonna write that down. All right, so we're in cylinder number hole. Uh, excuse me, we're in, we're in hole number two. And then that's the top reading, 4.0020. And now what we need to do is take that measurement that we got from the piston, which is right there, 3.9995. And we just need to subtract it from that. Let's do that and see what the difference is. At the calculation, that is our piston to cylinder wall clearance, 0 0.0025. Let's compare that to factory specs. Factory specs, that is the max limit. The max limit meaning that GM said that if it goes anything more than 0 0.0031, it's technically out of the limit. Uh, but when it comes to performance stuff, they claim that you want stuff just a little bit looser. Uh, so actually this number being a little bit bigger on my setup, I'm not too concerned, but I'm sure there is a point where if it gets too loose, you'll have stuff like maybe like, uh, like, like piston rock in the motor when it's cold, you know what I mean? And that'll cause like some noise while it's idling, you know, warming up or whatever the case is. When it get warm, it might tighten it back up because of course, uh, with the heat, the pistons expand or whatever the case is, but I want my stuff to be in the 30s. So for the most part, that's the gist of measuring all the critical components in your motor to know what direction you need to go. Um, all of this stuff is very important. Without measuring stuff like the crank and measuring like the rods, you don't have a clue what bearings you're gonna need. Um, without daggone measuring the diameter of the pistons, and then measuring the diameter of your bore. I mean, you don't know that when you slap that mother back together, it's gonna start smoking, huffing and puffing, and you basically wasted all that time and money. So um, I think I'm gonna conclude, conclude the video at this point, and then hopefully on the next section or the next segment of building this motor, we can actually start putting parts together, talk about like filing your piston rings, um, how to go about doing stuff like that, how to torque your junk down, you know, blah, blah, blah. But we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you along for the ride on building this stock bottom end uh, short block and slapping everything back together. And let's see if we can make more power than we did last time with the Hurt seven cylinders. Um, I'm, well, not seven cylinders hurt, but one one piston that was hurt. Um, but I'm here to tell you, even with that piston being hurt, that mother running on seven, 
cat juggle is still strong, so I can't wait to see how strong it's gonna be popping off on all eight. So hit the subscribe button, and if you like this content I made you laugh, write me a comment. Check you later. Oh yeah, at some point we're gonna put these puppies to use too. So you might wanna stick around. Sick.